All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining. I uh, just wanted to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Jason Etter. I'm the Director of Business Development over at Profound Cloud. And today we're going to talk about implementing Google Drive across your organization. And just as a reminder to everyone, this session will be recorded and you'll be able to um, share it with your colleagues if needed. Uh, please bear in mind that in GoToWebinar, in the control panel, there is a spot where you'll see questions. Please feel free to ask those questions. Um, I might not be able to get to every question today, but I'll be certain to respond individually after the session is over with. Um, and, but in the meantime, I will try to address questions as they come in. Um, and thank you uh, again for joining. So let's just go over the agenda for today. I'm going to be talking first and foremost uh, about the value of Google Apps very briefly. Just as a refresher, some of the people attending here don't have Google Apps, uh, and I wanted to just touch on that. Uh, we're also going to then address the idea of thinking beyond Gmail and what that means and how uh, implementing Google Drive across your organization is uh, top of mind with that topic. And then, of course, we're going to really dive into uh, utilizing Google Drive as a file server, okay? And then, lastly, of course, how you can do it, all right? So let's jump into it. Let's not discount the importance of apps as a platform, right? It's the core of what we do and the basis of, uh, for our authentication. So let's refresh ourselves quickly. When you invested in Google Apps for business, uh, you wanted to work better together from everyone, everywhere, anywhere. Uh, you wanted to share and create your communications from um, any device, uh, whether you're a Mac user, a PC user, a Chrome OS user, an Android user, or an iOS user. You wanted to have that communication there. And share and create those ideas across your organization through different platforms, such as Google+, creating internal communities, being able to communicate and collaborate on projects, things of that nature. And then, of course, you want to discuss and share information with your partners, uh, just like I did today, creating this uh, presentation for you so I could share it. And then, of course, being able to do this on any device, as I talk, said earlier, is imperative. Being Whether you're commuting, um, you're on a train, you're in a taxi, you're in the office, and you have uh, different devices and you know, things are top of mind, you want to be able to address them from any device and have that type of accessibility everywhere. And more recently, Google released Google Drive for Work, okay? So with Google Drive for Work, there are no, no longer any limits to slow you down. And let's talk briefly about what that means. That means unlimited storage uh, with no more managing quotas ever. Uh, Drive supports multi-terabyte files and is available in over 70 languages. And it's built on Google's globally optimized data center network, so performance and availability are world class while also being green. In addition uh, to being available, data also needs to be secure, right? This is very important. So Google's infrastructure has all the major security certifications plus a team of over 400 security engineers working full time to protect uh, your systems and users. Drive includes auto reports that let you track all user activities and securely and security controls so you can customize Drive for your organization's needs. Data in Drive is encrypted at rest and in transit, and that's new. And mobility security is built in. Drive gives you a company-wide file search, and over the course of a year, uh, Google will be adding additional archiving and discovery tools as well. Google is constantly coming up with new ways to detect security threats, so you'll benefit from the innovations like suspicious login detection, et cetera. Okay? And Google Drive for Work is even easy to manage. With centralized admin panel and convenient management tools, it integrates with your existing authentication systems. And with Drive's reporting features, it's easy to visualize usage and sharing trends. Okay? But, so what does this mean, right? Let's start thinking about going beyond Gmail, right? Believe it or not, this is what most organizations see when they think of Google Apps. I can tell you, it is certainly not what you bought into. In many cases, you could knock um, that drive icon off to the side in some cases. Do you really think uh, forward-thinking organizations invested, invested into Google simply for a mailing calendar? I hope not. Here are some familiar icons. 
Now here's what we see uh, when thinking of Google Apps. There's endless opportunity. We see an enterprise-ready engine constantly churning out iteration after iteration of incredible power, and it's placed in your hands. So what happens? Why did the gone Google buttons, t-shirts, and signage fade away into the abyss? Why did the work monster consume the excitement that once existed? Well, to assist, here's something very telling. Better Cloud, the makers of Flash Panel, did a study on the usage of Google Apps versus the time on Google Apps. I was so excited to see that Docs outrank uh, Hangouts. That's awesome. To see users who have adopted to Google Apps utilize Docs close to 75% of the time is incredible. I'm already a very excitable person, but these results are, are extremely encouraging. We just need a higher ad adoption rate out of the gate. And a lot of it has to do with this simple phrase. I hear almost every day from customers, right? I don't know what I don't know. To me, it means that either I'm not doing my job, or at the very least, I'm not doing a good job of advocating, training, and educating on what's out there beyond Gmail. So here it is again. Here are the many opportunities to grow your business with Google. Today's session will be focused on implementing Google Drive in a concentrated and, power, and power, purposeful way across your organization. More so, from an administrative standpoint, let's talk about living the dream when it comes to your files. So for anyone who is fortunate enough to be tasked with managing a file server, these items should look very familiar to you. Patching. Uh, redundancy and replication across multiple sites, storage arrays, and keeping those updated and maintained, and typically one of the largest pain points, providing VPN and remote access. So what is the dream? Well, here it is. The dream is to shut down the file server and move all of your data to Google Drive. Shut her down, set it on fire, give it a good kick, consider recycling, and move on to business functions that matter most to you matter to the organization's growth rather than fixing problems. Google Drive says you should share information among small teams. You should search, not browse or sort. And Google Drive also suggests that we should let our users manage their own sh sharing. Okay, that makes a lot of sense when you think of Google as a company and their methodologies within the workplace. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that's how your organization works. What we more commonly see is IT managers control and monitor permission centrally. They may say that's how it is, has to be, and will be for the foreseeable future. Additionally, I've been in board meetings where the suggestion of user-based management made IT directors cringe and even feel ill at times. And let's face it, sometimes you just need to browse instead of searching, and there's, you know, it's their job to provide that capability. So Profound Cloud, we face, we're faced with a conundrum. We have this incredible new platform, Google Drive, and also some tried and true methodologies of file organization that we rely on. Google Drive was trying to tell us to do something different than we were before. So our challenge was to come up with a list of best practices to marry the more traditional IT concepts with Google Drive and really make it more feasible to adopt Google Drive across the organization and eliminate the re uh, reliance of the file server infrastructure altogether. We've had great success with our own company for many organizations we work with. So here's what we're going to talk about today. We'll talk about folder structures and naming conventions and how Exa actually exactly what you would have had on your traditional file server. You likely have a particular hard drive that has shared data on it. Let's call it the F drive. 
inside your F drive, you have all of your shares which can manage, you can manage in one place. Think about doing something similar in Google Drive. Here's some guidelines for this root folder. A root folder should be owned by a non-human admin account. This is, going to, this is going back to general IT best practices, right? But it's something that gets overlooked when focusing on the newness or, or work involved when deploying apps across the domain. You want to separate the super user accounts from the day-to-day -day work. First and foremost, you want to set up the root folder so that everyone in the organization can view it. Remember though, under the umbrella of this root folder, a particular individual will only be able to view the folders they have access to. This is unlike a traditional Windows server and we'll address that later. Set up the root folder so that only the owner, read the non-human account, can edit. That's very important. That way the structure that you design cannot be interrupted. And similarly, you want to set it up so that only, um, only one can change permissions, just as I addressed there. So let's take this a little bit further. In Google Drive, the world is flat. This is something that my CEO, Michael Spadaro, came up with that I found extremely revealing and relevant to this presentation. Let's look at what this means. So there are two different potential file hierarchies. The first, as you see in the image, is a traditional file server. Let's call it a deeper file structure where you have more nesting and more subfolders. This works extremely well for a browser uh, mentality that when you're browsing, you can naturally move from one topic to the next. Google Drive is a little different. It's search-based, so we actually recommend, an organization, uh, recommend a flatter folder structure. This is obviously a simplified example, and every organization is going to be a little different in how they adopt uh, this concept. And there's different degrees to the level of flatness or deepness when it relates to your organization's file structure. But the general takeaway is to think about a flatter folder structure. If you have a background in traditional IT file structure, you're probably either A, asking yourself why you deleted Candy Crush on your phone, or B, looking around for a doctor because I'm obviously in need of medical assistance. Well, let me give you one very important reason for consideration. If you think about a search-based environment, let's look at two folders, sales reports and marketing reports. In a flat structure, and I search for re reports, I'm going to just see folder names. I'm not going to see paths in Google Drive. If I think about what that would look like if I had a deep structure, my search results would get me reports and reports. This is because they'd be subfolders of sales and marketing. So by flattening that folder structure one to le one level, what's been done is allow for users to search more efficiently and effectively and find the folder they're looking for. Remember, they're searching on a Mac or PC, they're going to be able to search and see relevant paths unlike Drive. Drive just gives you the name. With this being said, the name of a folder is now extremely important when designing a Drive folder structure for your organization. And this is one of the key reasons we recommend a flatter folder structure. When you combine that with the fact that there's a lot of truth to search, uh, don't browse when it comes to Google Drive, and we're no longer concerned about giving the user the easiest browser experience, but rather a completely optimized search experience instead. Same, uh, same way you would provide your SEO to your website, you want a search engine optimized for Google Drive. This continues with file names though too. In, in traditional file servers, uh, you have a hierarchy with a folder called client XYZ, uh, subfolder proposals, and then inside that, Google Apps and user support. Now, if I'm browsing to that, I understand this is the Google Apps end user support proposal. I get it and I understand it's client XYZ because I've browsed through the hierarchy. But if I search and I get Google Apps end user support, that means nothing to me. With this being said, you need to apply the same methodology to your files as you would folders in Google's flat environment. So when you search for client XYZ, you'll immediately find the end user support proposal. Again, traditionally, IT admins like descriptive file names but not lengthy file names. 
in Google Drive, it is ne it's a necessity to be as descriptive and lengthy as possible as needed for the best SEO-like results. So, now I'm going to uh, briefly cover role-based permissions, which many of you are likely familiar with. Actually, I received a question about permissions too. Uh, in addition to the way that the folder arch architecture works, how do we make sure that the onboarding and offboarding process is simplified and et cetera? So role-based permissions has been part of IT best practices for, as long, uh, for a long time. But what we see, since Google Drive tends to lend itself to the sort of ad hoc as needed sharing method, which can work in a very small team, we see a lot of customers just sharing individuals on an as-needed as basis. And so it looks like this image. Phyllis, Sally, Wendy, and Jim all have access to this folder, and they can do what they want. They please, right? What we recommend is as follows. Set up role groups. There are groups in the admin panel specifically for administrative, administrating drive and making sure they have access to the things they're supposed to have access to. Maybe Phyllis and Sally are members of the sales group, and Wendy and Jim are members of the marketing group. What's important here is using groups that are specifically designed for Google Drive. We do not recommend using your basic email distribution groups that you might use for email purpose for this. And this is specifically why. When naming, we give it the name role. So there's a clear distinction in the admin panel between your role groups for Drive versus your distribution list and groups for Gmail. Another consideration is to ensure these groups are restricted so they won't be used as email distribution lists. So once you do away with the single user permissions and enable the role-based permissions, you end up with a dramatically cleaner permissions list. You have uh, the drive admin who will be the owning this folder and permissions given to the specific role groups. So here are some other things to keep in mind. Using role-based groups, uh, role-based permissions makes for a significantly faster employee onboarding and offboarding process. So when Sally comes aboard, we don't need to think about the 17 to 30 folders she needs to have access to. We just need to understand the role that she plays, what she was hired for. Keeping a cleaner permissions list is also significantly easier to manage. The last thing you want to see is a 60-line item permissions list with various users spread across, which makes it nearly impossible to digest, analyze, or report on. And as discussed, using restricted Google Apps uh, groups is the best practice. We highly recommend it uh, to make it a, uh, make what we said above. It just makes the whole process so much easier. And as we, as we mentioned earlier, the topic is thinking beyond Gmail and taking full advantage of the enterprise capabilities Google provides. All of this work for file structure seamlessly increases efficiency in other business processes and is why we're taking the time to discuss and strategize how you can optimize Drive for your business, why it's so critical. So just to summarize, here's what Google Drive architecture should look like with the recommended approach that was just discussed. We have a root folder called Acme Drive. We've got a flat folder structure that has taken away one level of the hierarchy to support better searching. We've assigned role groups to the top level folders. And what we've also done is made sure that nobody else apart from the admin is allowed to change the permissions on the top level folders. As to what level the hierarchy you lay out for your users, think of it as a shelf. And once you have built the shelf, you can allow them to fill it up. But what you want to do is ensure that you, the admin, is in control of the shelf. You're in control of the outer permissions. That's the goal and the goal we're achieving. Once this root folder is created, then you need to deploy it to your end users. More importantly, you need to spend the time and resources on how to use it. A couple of really uh, simple suggestions to get started is if you're taking, uh, if you take the sharing link from uh, the Google Drive root folder and short it, uh, use something within your organization or, you know, google.g, i.e., whatever, or, uh, you know, tiny URLs uh, you'd like to make, uh, but a nice, short, and easy, something to remember URL so that everyone can easily get to the root folder and drive. When you hire a new employee, part of their training and onboarding should be giving them this link so they can access the shared assets.
and this is key, ensure that in your training that all employees add the root folder uh, to their my drive, uh, oh, add the root folder to their my drive for quick and easy access. There's other reasons for this too, and it directly re relates to those of you who are, you know, who are developers or, you know, they're looking to integrate with all the APIs that are now available through Google Drive for Work. Most areas of the Google Apps platform that integrate with Drive is centered around my drive. This is really important. If you're using something like Basecamp or some type of CRM that accesses Google Drive, many times you're just going to get access to that My Drive. And so My Drive, shared with me, uh, recent start, etc., cetera, um, is seen. But most applications or integrations uh, start with the My Drive. And you want to ensure your staff can quickly access this root folder. Furthermore, if you don't set a policy to add the root folder to My Drive, let's say a user is in Gmail and wants to attach a proposal, this could be a problem. If they only access the root folder via the short link, and they're, then they're kind of out of luck and will be forced into an awkward workaround or at the very least a difficult, difficult, have a difficult time or a support ticket gets opened for something that should be completely seamless. Really, the end goal here is that we don't want your users to have to worry about permissions. That's the, the IT team's responsibility. Um, sure, it's nice to empower them when needed, but providing a structure has enormous payout that is significantly more manageable as your business uh, and data store grows. So what's next? Consider the following. The only way this formula works is if you're completely invested in the work that it entails. Understand the value of performing a full audit in order to properly document this new architecture. Educate leadership and colleagues with the, on the implications of making such a switch. Focus on the good because with Google it always outweighs the bad. Advocate the importance. Look, you've made the investment already, most likely, and to not enable your organization to fully utilize this unbelievable technology would be a, a constraint. So train them, train them, train them, train them. Stop thinking that your organization already has a handle on using Google Drive. I have heard on many times, I talk with organizations that are psyched about this plan about going uh, to Drive, switching from a file server to Drive, and they say, well, you know what, our team really already has an understanding of Google Drive. That may be very true, but they don't have an understanding of the customization that has gone on in the background. So you need to really customize new training materials and new documentations, uh, messaging, things like that, just like you did when you first went Google. This is, a, this is a large change for the organization, and it's only successful through training and education and advocation as well. They probably, you know, do know about Drive, but providing that training and, you know, surrounding the, the customization is really, really important. They need to see and adapt to this vision, your vision, in order for it to be successful. And just as an added nugget here, this type of file structure makes the argument for Chrome significantly more intriguing. It also increases the ROI of the investment of going Google in the first place. And just as a highlight, when I'm not on my Mac like I am right now, right there, that's my Chromebox, and I'm using that pretty exclusively. So that kind of summarizes the idea of using Google Drive as a, as a file structure. So let's talk a little bit more now. We are... Um, I hope that you're understanding the vision that we have here, and I'm looking forward to talking with a lot of you after this session concludes. So let's start here with um, this glimpse that we just talked about, about how companies look at Google's platform beyond Gmail, and think about how this platform, this methodology of using Drive as, a, as your file server can really change a lot for the better. So. I think for a next step, uh, something that I really want to reiterate, in addition to the training, of course, is be patient. Take a big step back and decide on the right process in order to roll this out accurately. This is not a click-to-install methodology and requires time, resources, and most importantly, training, as I've already mentioned before. Here's an image of how we do this in our office. Before we design this, uh, this methodology, we actually cut out pieces of paper with joiners, connectors, and processes and walk through the whole process A to Z. Then, after organizing the steps, 
we go through it again and question the how and understand the finer details. It may look overwhelming. It is at times. But because of this, we're able to understand the architecture, permissions, and the access required to make this successful. It's, again, it's just not something you download and then, you know, you're up and running. So, <clears throat> we welcome the opportunity, of course, to work with you. Um, this is something that we offer as a service. Um, I wanted to make sure that we talked about our thoughts behind it, but, you know, we do also offer this as a service. Um, we invite you to consider a partnership with us um, and enable uh, Google Apps enhanced admin support, which includes our hands-on white glove support, along with a dedicated account manager to provide monthly platform updates, access to uh, our support specialists, and full support across Google for Work. Furthermore, we also offer full staff support should you be interested in mitigating the responsibility or further mitigating the responsibilities of Google support as the platform continues to evolve, as it does very often. Phase two is where we perform an, an internal audit of the current data files stored and how they're accessed regularly, whether these are universal files or disjointed files. We, we want to work with you to understand it. This goes back to the process where we would cut out the, the images and processes and such and joiners. Uh, we would do that with you. And through our sessions, we discuss which files and folders require global or restricted accessibility. Furthermore, will address any security needs and potential third-party applications that will replicate the requirements in place around your current on-premise file server. All this will lead to our team determining the optimal Google Drive navigational structure, which will be presented to your team following the conclusion of this phase. Then, um, this is where we'll build out and configure the drive architecture for your organization. This includes the folder structure, configuration, and creation of the role-based permissions and sharing structure. Additionally, our team will distribute documentation regarding the structure for your team to reference individually for future use. This is different than the documentation that we're going to recommend in phase four, which is end user friendly. This would be documentation that would be more for the IT team so that they're more familiar with what the structure is, what the roles are, and how it operates. Whereas in phase four, this is the actual migration and training. Now, we understand that there are certain security requirements that may prevent us from being um, able to actually touch the physical data. So our team has designed a, a plan that will allow us to um, deploy and work directly with your organization to provide support throughout the migration, whether we're actually touching it or you're the ones that are touching the data. And this includes communication templates, um, our support, uh, and multiple training sessions, and end user friendly documentation. It's really important to focus on those things. Okay? And Here's a simpler model, model, simpler model of our plan. The two most pertinent aspects are the initial discovery discussions with department leaders, along with the customized training sessions and documentation to encourage and excite the staff. The idea, this is the workflow itself, right? You can either start with this part right here or end with it. The idea, though, first is we want to understand, you know, what does your current file server look like? We've been in cases where the structure is very well defined and it is working well. We've come into situations where uh, some of the data is in the file server and other parts of the data are in Google Drive already, but it's, you know, disjointed. So we want to work and create a plan to uh, remove the risk of having data spread across multiple places and enable you guys to understand what that structure uh, looks like in Google Drive from an admin standpoint. And we'll collaborate with uh, the different teams. We find that incredibly important, too. You know, there are several different teams within your organization. They all have different ideas on what data is important, what files need to be accessed, and how they need to be accessed, what applications they need to be used for. And we want to discover all of that before actually designing the architecture. And then, of course, we'll uncover the project and support solutions that fill the gaps uh, with profound cloud. We want to understand a little bit more. Um, we talked, touched on this a little bit before, but the idea that, you know, your file server on-premise probably has some permissions that are absolutely required in order to be successful in Google Drive, and it might actually be the reason why you haven't moved away from the on-premise file server to begin with. We want to work with you and try to investigate some great third-party applications that might make sense for you, and we'll make our rec recommendations based off of your requirements, okay? Um, as we talked earlier, we really think that upgrading to Google Drive for work 
um, for the auditing capabilities and also for you know the storage capabilities and just being able to get full access to what Google really intends on it being its uh, premier suite is something to very seriously consider um, and will make this transition a lot easier. And then of course the advocation and training uh, of the new structure uh, that we'll provide is very important as well. Okay. So if successful, you'll be able to increase operational efficiency and operational effectiveness. Think of how the flat file drive implementation could affect your organization. That means true technology ROI for your organization and not just another product you purchase that is un unappreciated uh, or underappreciated. So <clears throat> I encourage you to work with us. Um, if you have any questions, please uh, email me directly at jason at profilecloud.com. And also feel free to download our full report. Everything I just talked to you about today, we put into a very comprehensive report uh, for you to share with your team. Um, I'll be sure to not only send the recording of the webinar to everyone, but also uh, this link so that you can access um, our uh, Google, going from a file server to a Google Drive architecture. Um, and now what I'm going to do is address some of the questions and uh, we'll go from there. Now just bear with me, I, I haven't seen the questions yet, so I just want to look at them and see if I can address them one by one or if I need to set up an individual uh, session with these people. <clears throat> so there was one question regarding uh, the size limits. So that's precisely why uh, we do recommend if you're going to switch from your file server, your file server could be several terabytes, it could be you know, a, really a, a large amount of data. So we highly recommend considering upgrading to Google Drive for work for uh, you know really minimal fee for being able to unleash unlimited data within Google Drive and also don't forget unlimited data within Gmail too. So that's going to, you're no longer going to have to be worried about quotas and who has how much storage and you know kind of the disjointed billing system. You'll be able to remove that concern altogether. Um, the, another question was, if the user is not the owner of the files, how does the user's drive look like? So great question. Um, the way that it will work is if you don't actually own the file, uh, since you have access to view the entire organizational, uh, or sorry, you have the, the ability to view the entire architecture, um, the files that you, have a, uh, uh, that you are allowed to see based upon your, the, the role-based permissions that are out there, you will be able to see those files. and how you view them will not change uh, whether you own them or not as long as you have access based upon your role. Um, another question is if the user creates a new file, the owner rights are not inherited. Um, that is true. That's actually part of the, the new policy and structure and documentation that we would provide along with training. For example, at Profound Cloud, we live by this. So we, we eat our own dog food. Whenever I am working on a marketing campaign or a sales proposal, uh, everything goes into our Profound Cloud Drive and it follows the exact methodology that I just discussed today. So it is our policy uh, within the organization to when if I have a new proposal, I have to go and follow that naming convention structure and goes into that uh, the, the respective folder within the sales proposals um, folder. And so for, that's actually a really good example of how user adoption and training really plays well into this because once it becomes the norm, it, it's exactly how or why your organization now has a file server on premise with specific roles and how the different hierarchies work. It's the same type of concept just applied to a new technology. Um, <clears throat> there's a new question here about must users search and browse folders and files from a browser window only? Are users expected to only use Google Docs and Sheets versus Microsoft Office? So there's a, a couple of questions in there. The first question regarding, you know, browsing um, within uh, Google Drive. Um, yes, if you're using, if you're going to be switching to Google Drive, you will absolutely be required to do all of your perform all of your searches within the Drive interface, just like you would be searching um, on your desktop uh, that is mapped to your file share. Now, in terms of only using Google Docs and Sheets versus Microsoft Office, absolutely not. Um, and Google has really made uh, great pains to make this the case. So if you watched uh, Google I.O. earlier this year, Sundar Pichai actually talked about this idea of using Google Drive and have it seamlessly interact with uh, Microsoft Office and other uh, applications as well. 
um, Google really has done a fantastic job. For example, if um, you're a Google Apps user and you email me a file uh, that is either a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet or a Office document, without actually having to have Office on my computer, it'll automatically open that file for me so it's readable and actually editable too. Uh, there is the option to convert it if needed to a Google Sheet or a Google document if required, but for, you know, simple minimal changes, if it's a, if it's a PowerPoint presentation or if it's a spreadsheet or it's a uh, Word document, you can open it, view it really quickly or even make quick edits. If it's a proposal, you want to just make some quick edits or even redline. Uh, there's some really wonderful things that are out there uh, that Google has done and continues to do uh, on a constant basis. Um, another question here that says, would you create a folder structure for individual projects? For example, I have a folder called Web Services Projects. Would all team members put the documents at the top level, or would you create a folder for the individual work, individuals working on the project? Great question. So my, uh, uh, using the methodology we talked about, I would likely, within the main Acme Drive folder, if you will, uh, let me just go back to the image to help support that. Let's see here. What we want to see is just so I can put a little bit more of an image to this. Okay, so as you can see, the Acme Drive folder is here, right? So ideally, what you would want to do is create a, depending on the department it was in, and then the projects, uh, you probably, let's say it was a marketing project, so it would probably be marketing projects. And then within that folder of marketing projects, you would have the actual project services projects, if you will. Um, that would actually be the opportunity to create that folder. And then we, based upon the roles and that of the people on that team, they would then have access to that folder. Uh, that would be the best way to do that. And then as people enter and exit the team or the project, um, they would have access to everything very quickly and seamlessly based off of those role-based permissions. Um, another question, does Google Apps for Education have the same quotas as Google Drive for Work? So unfortunately, um, Google Drive for Work is exclusive uh, for Google Drive for Work. Education does not currently, is not currently offered uh, for the unlimited quota. Um, that I know that that's something that Google has uh, been aware of and is working on, but currently the only way to get the full Google Drive for Work suite is to purchase Google Drive for Work. All right, let me just see. I think there might be a few more questions. Let me just check. Okay, we are a small nonprofit with limited funds. What help can I get from Profound Cloud in getting this implemented? So feel free to just, uh, let me just go back to my email address. I'd be happy to work with you. Um, my email is jason at profoundcloud.com. I'd be happy to talk with you individually. Um, and then you can go for it. We can talk about what that project would look like. And if you are using Google Apps for Education, uh, bear in mind that you don't have to go to Google Drive for work. Um, there will be limitations on the quota, uh, which I can address uh, later on, uh, depending on how large your file servers are. There are ways to purchase additional storage, et cetera, if you had to. Um, if you are a business, though, I highly recommend move, making the move to Google Drive for work uh, to avoid any of those questions or situations would be excellent. But for education, we will address them as they come in. Um, Oh, and then actually, I believe I just missed it, that uh, Google Drive for EDU is being released with unlimited storage. That's fantastic. So <laughs> perfect example of, uh, you know, I was so focused on the webinar today that I missed that announcement. That's wonderful news. Uh, thank you, Jay. Um, with that being said, that, that that's going to um, enable education really to a whole new level of uh, access and really abandon some of those on-premise uh, file service greatly. Thank you, Jerry. I really appreciate that information. Um, please go look for the Google update alerts for that, and I think there'll be really information for the EDUs out there. Um, that is all the questions I have today. Uh, what I will do, like I mentioned, is this is being recorded, so I'll be sure to send everybody a copy of it, uh, along with uh, our full report uh, that you guys will have access to to share. I thank everyone for coming today. I think this was a great session, a lot of really interactive, excellent questions. Um, and looking forward to speaking with all of you at a later time. Again, please email me, jason at profoundcloud.com, and I'd be happy to work with you uh, and move forward with uh, this methodology. All right, thank you, everyone. I really appreciate your time.